If you remember, one of the four pillars of wellness that we believe in here at Sage is exercise. And sometimes it can be the hardest thing to get momentum on. You are going to hear today from J.R. Mendeville, who is one of our holistic healers of Orange County, who will make today fun for you when you're thinking about exercise and how to get your body moving. It's so important and imperative for overall holistic health and wellness to keep that body moving. So have a listen here, learn from J.R., and you'll be so happy that you did. Sage is a 501c3 nonprofit organization building community by providing education and counseling about physical, mental, and spiritual well being. We encourage all of our listeners to find their own path to what holistic wellness means to you. My name is J.R. Mandeville. Uh, I've been teaching martial arts over 40 years. Um, I, I never thought that I'd be teaching martial arts like I, like I am now because I started in the corporate environment uh, working for Epson, Toshiba, uh, electronics companies, and, and being in a cubicle and doing my thing there and doing martial arts or exercise on the outside. And, and what I um, found is that, boy, corporate environment is brutal on the body. <laughs> it's, it's awful because, you know, you're usually in, in one place and not able to move around as easily. Uh, so I'm really grateful in, in how things have changed for me and how, what I do now. So going into what I do, I, I teach motion and not just motion for the sake of motion, uh, because anybody can do that. I do a motion for the sake of engagement of the body, engagement of the mind. Uh, fall prevention is happens to be one of the great things that we learn from it. Um, also, self uh, defense is another thing, but it, that those aren't the focuses. The focuses are how do we move so that we can really enjoy our motion, so, so that when we look down, we say, "Wow, my body can do this, or it can do that, or I'm here and I could do this and really improve what I feel right now." And that's what I'd like to everybody to be thinking of in the sense that, okay, what's your favorite activity? What's your favorite sport? Does it, en does it engage your mind? Does it engage your body fully? Does it uh, allow you to you know, change and change your level and, and, and not just um, how hard it is physically, but how hard it is mentally? Because those are all important. Um, what, uh, how much time do you take in doing that? Um, do you take 15, 20 minutes? Do you have to, you know, uh, I, I know some people, they spend three hours at the gym. I'm like, who does that? <laughs> How do you do that? Um, and, and then finally, uh, when do you do it? Uh, do you do it, uh, you, do you have to, again, sequester yourself off to the gym to do this? Or can you do it, you know, when you're laying in bed? All those, that, that's, those are the things I like to address because uh, I stopped going to the gym. I don't like to go to the gym. Why? Because it's dirty, <laughs> number one. Uh, number two, unless it's social, all you're going to be doing is working on a machine by yourself, maybe, you know, feeling it's not social. So, uh, or, or, and then um, the last thing that I really think about the gym is unless you're really trained to lift weights or do this or do that, likelihood of injury is pretty high. Uh, so, so, you know, taking all those, I say, well, I'm, I'm done with the gym. But even though, you know, I still have strong muscles, I still, still can do that. So what am I doing that's so different than simply going to the gym? Uh, number one, I, uh, all, my, all my classes, what I do is I start with the limbering. The limbering is a somatic motion. It's uh, some uh, isometric motions. It's some quick motions just to get the mod body into form. And these are the ones that I mentioned earlier when my mother was as after she got her, I uh, had her um, uh, bypass surgery, she wanted to move around more. Well, I, I was doing this and I said, well, you know, you could try this mom. Here, let me show you. And I just showed her, okay, nodding the head, get the neck going, you know, doing a couple of shoulder rolls, going down through the whole body, something that she could learn that, that she could do daily. And um, it was, there, it was such a such a incredible change that she was able to experience just in 
reducing her pain, increasing her flexibility, her range of motion. She engaged her mind more, even though she was doing these simple exercises, she was able to do them. She increased her stability, uh, you know, it, it just goes on and on. And I, I found the same thing happening when I did the same thing with one of my martial arts students who was at the time 60, 70 years old. And uh, as we were going through doing martial arts, she noticed that her likelihood of her falling and being unbalanced was reducing, uh, the, that she was increasing her, her strength. Uh, she said after her husband had passed away, that it was like half her brain had gone with her, with him because, you know, the engagement. And she says, that's coming back again. That engagement, that neuroplasticity is, is really engaging again. So, so I thought, hmm, well, there's, there's more to this. Then I started applying it to senior facilities. And they, uh, I remember this one gentleman would come in and uh, the, the, I, asked, I asked him, do you do any of the classes here? You know, because they had a bunch of other classes for, for uh, fitness. He says, no. <laughs> I only come to, why do you only come to, because it's interesting. I'm, there's something new to learn. There's, you know, I, okay, why, why is a low block so effective? Well, you know, it makes fast muscles. Uh, so, so what I, I found is taking martial arts and instead of using it as self-defense is using it for body development, body and mind development. Uh, and, and that's, that's what I do. So right now what I'd like to do with everybody is, everybody watching me, I'd like to change over to my other camera so that if you can all join me, we can do what I call, showed my mother. It's a little more involved now, uh, but at the end of the process, you're going to feel very differently. And that's, that's really where I want to take you. So let me change over to this other camera. I get to change things. Wrong, wrong one. Okay, can you hear me? It's still here. Okay. Okay. okay, I have an echo word. I don't think we can hear you anymore, JR. Um, I think you might have to just I'll mute one that. of you. How's that? Can you hear me? That's good, I think. Yeah. All right. Uh, let me turn off this one for the ball over there. Okay. I'll turn off this one too. So, if everybody would like to join me, let's stand up and get a motion on. <laughs> okay. So what I always do, I always start all my motions with um, bowing in. Why? Because this is a whole body experience. I'm honoring my body right now. So I bow in. This is a thanks to my body. I find a nice spot. Now we're going to start with our legs right now, leaning the hips forward. So we're kind of pushing on the balls, then leaning the hips back. So you're on the heels, on the balls, on the heels. And as you settle into your four pads, you should feel really balanced from the, um, from the hips down. Take a deep breath. And let's show, uh, uh, allow the shoulders to align over the hips. And then take another deep breath. And allow the head to align over the shoulders. So you should feel like now like the Eiffel Tower. You have your four pads. You're aligned perfectly all the way to the head. So we're going to tilt the head over and roll it back gently and roll it forward. If you have any limitations, just bear, bear those in mind. Rolling it back gently, rolling it forward. Now we're switching over to the other side, rolling it back gently, and rolling it forward. Rolling it back gently, and rolling it forward, getting my nice pops. Now, taking the chin over to the collarbone, looking down at your chin, just like you're looking at your shoulder, and then you're looking up, up at the burden tree, straight on up, and then you're looking down at your shoulder, just like as if the bird pooped on your shoulder. <laughs> and then straight on up again. And then switching to the other side. Chin to the collarbone. And looking straight up. Chin to the collarbone. And looking straight up. Ah, uh, yes. So your neck should feel very different than it did about 30, 40 seconds ago. So it takes that quick to do it. 
shoulder roll. So all we're going to do is just roll the shoulder. We're going to press them up to the ears, and you should feel things pop as you do this. Press, press, press. Now we're going to roll the shoulders back. So the shoulder blades are touching or as far as you can. And now two heavy buckets of water are pulling down on your shoulders. Now the shoulders are going to roll them forward. Actually try to touch these together. Really cup your, your shoulders. There you go. And then up to the ears. And we're going to continue that motion all the way back. Pressing the shoulder blades together. And then down two heavy buckets of water and rolling forward one more time, trying to touch those shoulders in front of you. Keep your chin back and then up your goes. And relax for a second. Does that feel good? Does that feel, okay, so we're going to do the opposite direction. Now, as I, as I do this, make sure your chin is tucked in so you're not doing a tech neck sort of thing. Chin is tucked in. And then up to the ears, rolling them forward, just like you have two heavy buckets of water, holding it up. Two heavy buckets of water, you're putting them down, and then rolling the shoulders back, touching the shoulder blades, and then up to the ears, continuing that motion all the way around, down, and now two heavy buckets of water, and then back, and then up to the ears, and relax. Ah, okay. So now we're from here up, kind of worked out. We're gonna continue with our arms. What I'd like you to do is to press the arms out, press as hard as you can, just like you're pushing an old Buick down the street, hyperextend the elbows right out in front of you. Now we're gonna rotate the hands outwards and then open up the arms. And you should feel those inner triceps get a good pull, but the uh, outer triceps are getting a great pull too. Now rotate the hands in and down all the way across. And then we're bringing them all the way in front of you. And now you're contracting the inner triceps. Roll down the fingers, roll down the palms, lock down the thumbs, pull back the chest and squeeze to the chest as hard as you can. Now a little bit harder and a little bit harder. And then pushing out again, go ahead and breathe, push. And then rotate the hands out, open up. And then rotate the hands in and down and in and across. Roll down the fingers, roll down the palms, lock down the thumbs, and then squeeze everything right to the chest, bringing the shoulders back to tight, 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 a little bit tighter, a little bit tighter, and then pushing out one more time. Push, 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 hyperextend those elbows, rotate those hands outwards, open them up completely, rotate the hands in and down, and bring them all the way back in inside. Roll down the fingers, roll down the palms, lock it down. And then squeeze to the chest, tight, 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 tight. And relax, shake out those arms. Now, everybody should be getting that bicep going. You should feel that right now. Now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna do a torso twist. So what I'm gonna do is reach around as far as I can. Keep the hips pinned in place. So we're not twisting the hips like this. We're keeping the hips pinned. And then reaching around as far as you can. Take a quick breath and reach a little bit further. Really working the obliques. And then switching to the other side, reaching around, take a quick breath, and reach a little bit further. And then switching to the other side, take a quick breath, and reach a little bit further, and switching again. Take a quick breath, and reach a little bit further, and relax. So from here up, the body should really feel developed. One thing I didn't include that I'd like to do right now is arm rolls. So we're just going to take the arms into all the way across, elbows crossing each other. So we're compressing the pectoral muscles. And then up, 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 up. When the vertical over, press your hands together. That will align your upper thorax. And then continue back behind you. Now we're going to just simply, simply go the other direction. Lift the hands back behind you as far as you can, and then pressing against that, they're going up. And it should feel like your arms feel about 50 pounds a piece. That's what you want. And then up to the vertical, press the hands together. That aligns the upper thorax. Reach across, elbows passing each other, pressing, and down. And relax. So. Those, we usually do a lot more of those, or actually I do three of those, but it's, it's like, how long does it take to do that? Not very long. 
Next one, hip stirs. So it's just like a big hula hoop, slow, big orbit. And slightly bigger orbit. Keep your head basically in one spot. So your hips and your body is moving, but your center of balance right here is staying pretty consistent. And now I'm gonna really reach my head downwards so I can get my hamstrings and then press across them. So keeping the legs as straight as possible. And then over we go. And then opposite direction, a little shallow motion, a little bigger each time. And if you've done this, if you haven't done this as often as I do, you might feel the tendons across the front of your hips doing some weird things. That's okay, because the fascia will eventually accommodate that. Getting all kinds of pops and relax. Awesome. So the next one, easy peasy, is knees up. Just bring the knees up. Now there's, right now you're probably lifting the foot, lifting the leg. I'd like you to change that up. I'd like you to use the toe to drive the knee upwards so it jumps by itself. This is really important because all the muscles that we're working, we want, want them to be as fast as possible. We want the type 2 B muscle, not the type 1. Those are great for being big but not for fast. Now, heels up. Try to hit your buttocks. All the way up. And now, opposite buttock. So you're gonna reach across and hit the opposite buttock. And now, for those people that aren't social distancing that should, we're gonna reach outwards and hit their buttock. <laughs> now, I noticed that, that George is doing this George, isn't it cool that you could do this exercise while you're carrying your child? Isn't that awesome? Exactly. So you can do almost all these exercises. By the way, if you want to make this really fun, go like this. And then here. <laughs> um, but just think about it. Okay, you're standing there pumping gas. Yes, we still have we still have a internal combustion engine. And my legs need some workout. So I'm going to just do a quick few of these and... I got a little bit of quick exercise. The next one helps walking. So we're gonna actually walk in place, knee out, heel up, so I, I'm extending my foot. Now I'm gonna switch through, knee out, heel up, and switch through again. Now, if you're bopping like this, as you switch through the next one, I'd like you to take a hold of your hips and allow them to drop with that leg that's, move, that's uh, bent. So my right hand, my right knee is out, my right hand goes down, I'm switching, my, now my left hand goes down. And I'm switching again, and I'm switching again. Now this is tilting the pelvis, not swaying. I'm not, I'm not going down like this, I'm not sashaying. I'm only tilting the pelvis. Now if you do this correctly, you should feel the spine doing this each and every time. And you should feel the lumbar really getting a good pull, good articulation all the way through that. Press into it. The other thing that this does, um, way back when you put a stack of books on your head or something on it, and you would walk without jostling the books. This does the same thing. It's for, sort of a farmer's carry, as if you had two buckets of, of milk and you walk. You're walking without spilling the milk. Instead of popping like this back and forth, it's a, it's a gentle motion. Now, what's nice about this, if you're working or walking or anybody's walking on uneven, uneven ground, your legs automatically start taking up that unevenness and, and allow you to walk without having to up, down, and possibly trip. So it's it's one other thing. So that's, that's the whole body. Everybody's body should feel very different right now. Do they? Awesome. So so that's my gift to you. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead and relax. But but that 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 has been kind of my uh, two minutes of bliss that I teach all my students because that means that you can take this anywhere. That's anywhere exercise. Uh, I was mentioning earlier, well, I might do sidekicks in the hallway. Why? Because I can. <laughs> and and uh, what one thing about uh, like high intensive, uh, HIIT, which high intensity interval training, is that that means instead of going to the gym, spending an hour there so you can get your 15 minutes worth of uh, HIIT in, 
Uh, you could do it any place. You could do it, George, while you're carrying the child. You might do round kicks side to side. Or you might do the snap kicks. Or you might do, you know, high blocks. Why is a high block so effective? Because it's not just getting the arm up here. It's making the arm move so fast that it feels like it's going to be impaled into the roof. Well, how is that important? That means all the bone and muscle structure that's involved in that has to work fast. And that speed is, is, is where, it's, uh, where the difference is. Uh, even though I love yoga, I love Tai Chi, I, I practiced those before, they don't have speed. <laughs> and without speed, we, we can't develop that. And then of course, learning new, new motions is always great for, for our um, neurons, especially for older folks. So, uh, you know, my, my, my perfect client is somebody in their 60s, 70s or 80s, they're interested in learning something new. They're very interested in staying mobile and not uh, avoiding injury falls. That's, that, is, that is key. Um, th though it's not necessary because some people don't think about it. By the way, everybody here is in their you know, under 40s probably. So you don't think about falling, but the likelihood of you falling is just as high as any place else. You might not hurt yourself but you're likely to fall. So uh, self-defense, the self-defense is from that good old mother earth that's trying to pull us down rather than the thug down the street. Now, one other thing I'd like to, to show you because I do do martial arts and uh, or I, I teach martial arts is uh, it's called a weave. So what if somebody grabs you like this? Like, what would you do? Let me show you. So you take one hand and you put it right between you right here, go ahead and follow me, and right between. Then as you tilt them over, you're gonna be in like a sideways uh, prayer position. You're gonna bring it upright and then turn. So this leg is gonna move. I'm gonna bring this hand in, sideways, turn it upright and turn. Now what that's doing, Linda, would you mind coming over here? I'd like you to do it though, if you don't mind. You, you know. Um, the weed. Okay, so <laughs> my wife's gonna choke me. Okay, go ahead. Okay, she is choking me. I put my hand between sideways prayer. I turn it, and it peels it off. Now, what's really nice about that is that you don't have to be really strong. If the person is is ex extending out like that, let me show that. If, if the person is extending out, go ahead. They're weakest right here. So I'm going to make my strength right here. And, and it's, um, practice it with somebody. You'll find that oh, it just peels off like nothing. Now, if somebody's coming to you aggressively, I could do the same thing. <laughs> I did it one hand. <laughs> Surprise me. But what I did, I, I don't know if you noticed, I not only did the weave, I stepped back. So I'm, I'm allowing her weight to come forward grabbing the arms and I could pull this way, which means they run into something over here. So, so it's, it's, it's a self-defense motion, but it's the same thing that happens, for instance, if, uh, let me back over here again. So, so I'm a big furry dog and I'm coming to one of your clients to say, hi, and there they go back, falling back. And I've had friends that have experienced that, that, uh, well, what do you do then? Well, there's so many things to do, and we practice those. Open, closing the door. Uh, doing the weave might not work the same way, but it is a start. So having those, those, uh, uh, those processes, those, those ideas in place, practicing them a few times, they become ingrained, and they become really effective for people. So that is what I do. I love doing it. I've been doing it for, you know, like I said, I've been teaching for 40 years, but really applying it to, to seniors. I've only been doing that about 10 years now. And, and I like it more, even though I teach, teach kids. And George, I, I was thinking, oh, uh, yes, uh, your daughter at three and a half, four years old, bring her in. And I do teach children's classes, be assumed. But teaching the, the seniors, what I found is that they um, – I might teach uh, one of the children how to do a, a, a special, you know, back spinning hook kick, and they go, "Oh, okay." 
But teaching uh, an adult how to not fall down, they within their mind they say, "Wow, this is so easy." So, so that, that's why I really enjoy teaching the seniors because they see that effect so much more. So, I'd like to open up questions for you. Yeah, we've got about five minutes left. So if anyone has some questions for JR, thank you so much for that, by the way, JR. It felt so good to get up and move and have that be interactive and can definitely see your passion for helping. I mean, this is a very practical approach um, for the elderly, especially. I mean, that's wonderful. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I guess this is as much of a question, but just really highlighting how important this work is. I worked with uh, kind of a county affiliated company at one point and you know working with adults that had severe mental illness and a big thing there is you cannot you really can't defend yourself in in a way that might harm them and yeah. so this is huge to be able to really like you said peel off these attacks from yourself because you, could, you know as you much decide as they how, are too you decide yes. how gentle you not want to be you you uh, exactly I've, I've had instances where i put the per person down you know okay i'll lay them down gently <laughs> But it is, it is okay, well, you know, you, you're ended up in a falling position because I have to move myself. And, mm -hmm. and I'm able to control it so well that they're, they're not a, they're, they don't injure themselves, even though they're in a position you know, all the way and uh, yeah. out of the aggressor position. So, yeah, it's, mm -hmm. it's very possible. It's, uh, it, it does take training to do that. But, you know, having certain cues, open and closing the door. Uh, I could show you that one. In fact, practice this one. Just simply... Becoming a door, sliding it open, or swinging it open, sliding it close. How, how hard is that to do? Well, when you do it with power, it changes it. When you do it with mm -hmm. just uh, uh, moving your weight and doing it slowly. Now, I'm thinking I'm going to kick the earth away from me so I'm no longer here. And kicking the earth to, to bring back. Very different. But it's the same thing in the sense mm -hmm. that when somebody is trying to push me down, I just open the door and say, okay, go ahead and push you. I'm not there anymore. So, so those, those are, again, the self-defense aspects of it, but more importantly, again, with the senior feeling that I'm about to fall, no, I'm not, is really life affirming. So, so that's what I appreciate. Yeah. Thank yeah you that's beautiful. Thank you. Yeah, thank Any you. other questions? Katie, did you have a question? Yeah, I did. I totally do. So two questions. So for the seniors, you're using the the open the door, close the door thing as a if they're about to feel like they're falling on their own, you could just get them to get the earth underneath them again. Right. That's really awesome. wonderful. I, and and the, one of the biggest reasons for that is that uh, I believe it's the, the statistics, statistics said that 95% of falls are to the side. That, that really addresses that really quickly. Um, there, there's other things that we teach, but uh, or that I teach, but that is probably the, one of the biggest ones. Now, the other thing I teach is that even though you're, you're learning how to open and close the door like this, you don't surprise yourself. Um, the, what, I, what I do is, is I, uh, you might say, get into their head just a little bit so that they're relaxed. If everybody wants to try this, you'll see what I mean. So, so if you can't stand up one more time, it's kind of a funny thing. So, so what I'd like you to do is to become that door. You have a doorknob here. This is the swinging part. This is the hinge part. And we're going to open it gently and then close it gently. And then open it gently and close it gently. Now, I'm going to tell you to open the door as fast as you can, but only when I say to open it. So relax as much as you can right now. Relax. Open the door, close the door. Good, now just a little different. Keep your eye on me the whole time. Open, close. Open, and close. Aha, uh -huh. open, be relaxed, close. Now go ahead and relax. So what was I doing? Well, because you have to relax. When you're relaxed, you, you can be more reactive because it, it becomes um, a subconscious motion rather than a conscious motion. When you're consciously opening and closing the door, it might not work as well. But when you're subconsciously, uh, oh, I need to open it, and you just, it just happens. 
so so it's again that's the martial arts aspect aspect of it because it's creating that that um, that tool that you could use and draw on at any time. So so it makes it more fun and interesting there as well as you can see. <laughs> awesome. Any other questions, Priscilla? Did you have a question? No questions, but thank you for that. I I think a uh, movement is important, and I speak for myself. It's something that we. Oh, I don't do very often, especially during the work day, but even just that like series of things that we did, I'm like, I could totally get up in between clients and do some of this movement and it would be so good for me. Okay. The, the, the motion that we did, the first motion, the limbering that takes, if you, if you rushed it, it'd take about two minutes. And in that two minutes, your body feels completely differently. Mm -hmm. and, and that's yeah. what I really promote to, to all my clients is that, well, okay, you get out of bed, you know, unless you're rushing off to the bathroom, you know, do, do the clean steps first as you get out of bed. I'm, I'm assuming somebody that, that, that's in, a senior, you're getting out of bed. Why would you want to do this first? Because it reattaches your, your legs to your body, to your brain, which means when you go to the bathroom or head off to wherever, you're not going to be taking a tumble the first thing. Or one of my clients says, yes, I, I do that before I go downstairs in my house because it's easier to go down the stairs. So there you go. <laughs> Thank you for spending some of your time today with us at Sage Holistic Health and Wellness Center. If you like what we're all about, please consider supporting our nonprofit organization by making a tax deductible donation. To do this, you can go to our website at www.sagewellnessctr.org and click on donate in the upper right hand corner. We look forward to spending some time again with you real soon. Take good care.